Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. Coming up, we take a look at a new Who knife. Uh, that's a British company making some British UK friendly knives. Uh, I get a new Kaiser knife in a trade with Dave, and we take a look at some of my automatic knives, some of the automatic knives in my collection. Now, I have to be uh, very limited in the money I spend on automatic knives because I'm allowed to have them. I'm just not allowed to carry them. So uh, that limits how many I can actually have uh, because, you know, we like to carry what we have. We like to have them on our person and fiddle with them and such. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, but before we get to any of that stuff, of course, as usual, we have to get to a pocket check. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And also, while you're on YouTube checking these things out, uh, you can also check them out through the episode numbers on the Knife Junkie dot com. So this one will be the knife junkie dot com slash two thirty five. While you're there, check out the knife close up videos uh, uh, and Thursday night knives. Of course, our live stream that's every Thursday night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And that's a great show because we always have a lot of banter going on uh, in the comments section. And the show usually lasts two hours now. We set out to have a one hour show, but now it's going about two hours. Uh, so check it all out through the knifejunkie.com slash YouTube. And while you're there also and watching Thursday Night Knives, just go to the knifejunkie.com slash join. And then you can actually set up your, your uh, phone, have it aimed at you, put in some uh, earbuds, and then you can actually come on and talk and uh, and meet me in person virtually. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Okay, so pocket check. Let's see what I'm carrying today, and uh, also let me know in the comments below what you're carrying today. That's always interesting to me. In my right front pocket, uh, we'll call that the EDC pocket uh, because I carry a knife there every day. It's never the same. Uh, but today I have my um, prized XM18 uh, Hinderer. This is the Spanto. And it's been reground. Uh, this one I had reground from uh, Razor Edge Cutlery, and man alive, uh, is it super sharp and hollow ground. You know, uh, that Spanto right out of the factory is usually pretty thick behind the edge, and it's usually, uh, I mean, it's sharp for sure, but um, it doesn't have that keen sort of slicing edge. So I had, uh, I had, uh, I had that done, and it is now one of my prized knives, definitely a prized hinderer uh, of mine. Love this thing. So uh, this is on the old action here. This is the um, Nylatron washers, and uh, I had a special scale made of this very, very classy Python micarta. Love this thing all day long. Uh, so today I decided I'd carry that. Uh, today is probably going to be a Lowe's day, and who knows, if I buy some rope, I'm going to need something very sharp uh, to cut through that rope because they only give their employees dull, uh, you know, carpet knives uh, to, to sort of work through stuff. I've, I had an experience like that once where I had, to, <clears throat> may I, sir, I was buying some of that, uh, some of that thick yellow nylon rope. It was for a, a cut test, and the poor employee there was just like... <clears throat> going back and forth with this dull little razor blade. And I said, don't they let you carry knives? And he said, no. And I said, you got a, you've got a store full of dangerous tools, and yet they force you to carry this thing. May I? And I pulled out the, at the time. It was an Emerson Horseman, and I just whoosh, sliced right through it. And the guy was like, what kind of knife is that? And, of course, I, I bent his ear. Uh, next in my pocket, I have the Lion Steel Hitano. I have, for the last year or so, been calling it the Gitano, like the old jeans from the 1980s. I'm sure probably none of you remember. Uh, but it's actually Gitano. I looked it up. Spanish word meaning male gypsy. And uh, this is a beautiful design by Gudi von Poppel and uh, beautifully executed by Lion Steel. Um, it has that classic Spanish Navaja look. 
And uh, I just love this thing. One great thing about this knife is it's walk and talk. It is something else. It's got a very stiff spring. Uh, so you have real confidence in using this knife. It's not going to close on you. And, you know, chances are you're using the knife uh, this way and using the blade so that it's not, uh, you're not forcing any, uh, you're not, you're not putting any force on the back of the spine. So it will, it will cut. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to put this down here. Look at this. This is a very photo friendly setup here. Uh, the Hitano is one I see a lot on Instagram. If you want to check out uh, my knife collection and also what's coming up on the podcast, a great place to do that is Instagram. It's like it's like the free advertising service for the knife junkie or for the knife maker or uh, what have you. That's where I actually go to find a lot of the guests that come on the show. You know, I've been on Instagram for a number of years now and you know, every day, every other day or so, I'm following a new knife maker. And I love that because you have a chance to check out their work visually day after day after day. You start to get to know someone's style. You start to get to know someone's collection or their uh, or the knives they're making. And uh, it's just a great way to do that. So uh, I also, you know, set up shots to look very casual. Oh, this is what I'm carrying today. And I'll, I'll, I'll sort of, you know, take great care in, in, in arranging the knives and in such a random sort of way, and then take pictures and put filters on it and all that. It's, it's pretty studied. I'd like it to be a little more spontaneous, but uh, what can I say when I'm, when I'm taking pictures, like most people, I like to represent, uh, represent myself visually as, as well as possible. So anyway, this is definitely an Instagram friendly uh, pairing here. And that's what I have in my pocket today. So go check us out on Instagram. You'll be happy you did. All right, next, uh, I want to get to some life, knife life news. Um, this is something I always have a hard time saying, but there's always some, some uh, interesting new stuff happening in the knife world. So um, the, uh, the thing I want to talk about today is a company called Who Knives. Now, who knives? That's H O O. If you're not uh, if you're not looking, if you're not watching this, H O O. Who knives is a UK friendly knife company. Now you know in Europe and in the United Kingdom they have some pretty restrictive knife laws, and who knives, uh, headed up by a gentleman named Carl Peterson. I, I'm sorry, Carl Pearson, uh, is <laughs> not to be uh, not to be mixed up with Jim Person. I know people like to call Jim Pearson. Okay, Carl Pearson, the head of Who Knives, is a lifelong knife enthusiast, but lives in Great Britain. And, uh, you know, Great Britain's a great place. Been there uh, plenty. I love it. Love the people. Um, love the culture. The one thing I don't love are the restrictive knife laws. And I think Carl Pearson felt the same way. So he started Who Knives to make knives that are UK legal but have some of the features that you might find on non-UK legal knives. This is his V2. It's the second knife. We featured uh, the first knife right here on the Knife Junkie podcast uh, about a half a year ago, I'd say. And this new V2 is really pleasing to my eye because it's got a lot of those sort of uh, tactical um, calling cards in terms of design. It's got, I mean, that, that blade right there looks a little bit like the, uh, like the Spanto I featured today. You know, it's got the uh, the long straight run. It's got sort of the tanto faceted tip, but it's still a drop point and it has that long swedge on top. So a very uh, good looking knife, this V2, and it runs on bearings, which we've all come to uh, enjoy, but it's a double detent system. So it you can, he's making this so that you can flip it out with the thumb stud. Uh, on the, the V1 had an actual flipper. He decided on this one to go just for the thumb stud. And uh, so he's designing this thing, engineering it to have really good action, you know, like this sort of flip it open with the thumb stud action. Uh, but of course, it's on a double bearing, I mean, a, 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 a double detent system. So it's not locking open. It's just staying open with that uh, second uh, detent. You look at it, it's got great ergonomics. The ergonomics are very sort of tactical to me. Uh, okay, I'll try and use a different word, um, but I can't. Uh, sort of a tactical look to it, but 
totally UK legal. That's just a hair under three inches, that blade, making it legal. Uh, that thumb stud is removable and adjustable. So you can slide it, slide it uh, forward in that slot for a different kind of action. Uh, one, it's also got a, um, a uh, reversible pocket clip, deep carry, which is nice. Nice big generous lanyard hole uh, finger guard there. Uh, up front towards the tang. And then something I really like about it is that uh, very Strider-esque sharpening choil. It's got a sharpening choil that instead of just being a perfectly half circular notch, it's sort of angled in. looks a lot like uh, the sharpening notch on a Strider. So I think these are very good looking knives. And um, I, I think he's doing great work there. I think he's built himself quite a nice little niche, um, you know, in the UK. If you want a knife that kind of looks like this, it's going to be hard to find without a lock. And then you're going to be a criminal walking around with a locking um, tactical style folding knife. So check out Who Knives. Uh, wait, uh, just a couple of details on this thing. Uh, well, he, it's it's not out yet, uh, but it's going to be of a, a high grade steel and it's going to be, you know, probably S35VN. Actually, yes, S35VN, and uh, it will have titanium handles. So like I said before, most many of the calling cards of a, a modern folding locking tactical knife. So looking forward to checking that out. I haven't seen one yet. I haven't uh, held a who knife in hand yet, but I aim to change that. Still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to get into the state of the collection. I have a couple of new models here to show off and a few on loan, not on loan, bequeathed to the station, uh, to the channel by uh, this old sword. Those will be giveaway knives for future uh, Gentleman Junkie knife giveaways. And then we'll take a look at the automatic knives in my collection. But first, if you like what we're doing here on the Knife Junkie podcast, you can help support us um, materially on Patreon. You go to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon, and there you'll have three different tiers of support that you can sign up for. We have a, a $10 tier called the Gentleman Junkie Giveaway. I have the Gentleman Junkie tier. We have the $5 Tactical Junkie and the $3 Gentleman Junkie tier. Those are monthly donations. And for your patronage, you get stickers, you get mentions on the podcast, and uh, other uh, access to exclusive content. Um, one great thing about it and a pretty popular feature is that at the Gentleman Junkie level, uh, we do a knife giveaway. And um, that's a monthly thing on the, on the um, what do you call it? The third, um, the third Thursday of every month. And, and as, this, uh, as this lower third says here, the next Gentleman Junkie knife giveaway is Thursday, August 19th. And I am not quite sure what we're going to be giving away this time, um, but uh, I have four, four different really cool options. So I'll be figuring that out shortly and you'll you'll hear all about it. Uh, so be sure to go to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon to check it out. That's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. The GetUpside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. GetUpside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit thenifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's thenifejunkie.com slash save on gas. All right, next up, the... State of the collection. Now, this is a spot of the show. This is the part of the show, the segment of the show, where I love to just show off. Now, I sent Jim a run of show, as I do every every week, telling him what I want to discuss. And this time, I did a copy and paste job, and I said oldies but goodies. Uh, so that's not Jim's fault, but none of these are oldies but goodies. These are all newies but goodies. So, Jim, I apologize. I can hear him. I can hear him somewhere back there, even though I'm not listening to him, I can hear him say, Bob, come on. There he goes. State of the collection. Perfect. Thank you, sir. So this week I got two really cool knives. One of them was in trade and the other was a gift. Uh, this was a gift from Spencer and, uh, well, the whole Finch knife company. And, uh, I am in love with this knife. This is the model 1929. It's a flipper. It's in the, uh, 
it's in the um, sort of spirit of the holiday. You see it's got that nice steel bolster up front. It's got sort of a squared off pro, uh, cross section and it is a bolster lock. As you can see, the, uh, the lock peeks out from right behind this scale. And what is a unique thing about this scale? Yes, I know you're noticing it too. Uh, that scale is a bone, dyed red bone scale. Uh, in sort of a saw cut uh, pattern there. And this is something that really thrills me about this knife is that uh, there are few modern flippers. Uh, this of course is a modern flipper, but it, it, it tips the hat a lot to sort of more historical designs. And uh, there are very few like that that actually have that bone handle. And I love bone from slip joints and that kind of thing. So it's really great to, to have that on a modern folder. Uh, the blade itself is a beautiful fat bellied clip point blade, and uh, it is extremely sharp. When I first pulled this out of the uh, box, I handed it to my wife, said, check this out. She flipped it open. Ooh, nice. And then she quickly absconded with it and started opening up. We had uh, some Amazon packages come in, uh, some books and stuff for my daughters. And she uh, quickly went to opening them up with this. So she uh, had the first crack at it and loved it very very came very very sharp now if you're looking at this knife and not just listening you can see that the belly of this there's a long um, relatively long straight portion of the blade but then it dips down I, i'm sorry but the whole straight is angled downward uh towards the belly and off the line of the pivot so not only does it have a nice belly and a nice straight but it's angled in such a way that it almost acts as a recurve. Uh, the blade, of course, is not recurved, but I put it down here on the cutting mat against that um, line there. You can see how the straight of the blade dips down and uh, and curves up right there at the uh, at the belly. So that presenting that rounded portion, pre presenting that belly in a downward angle like that, really accelerates the cutting of this thing, and um, so. Uh, that's a feature that I really like. The blade overall, yes, it is a clip point blade, but it also reminds me of a classical uh, scalpel. It has a scalpel-esque blade. Fully flat ground, thin blade stock, very thin behind the edge, came extremely sharp. Great way to use this knife is like this. I could see now, okay, um, here, I'm going to hold this over here in front of me for a second. I could see how this might be a good skinning knife. Uh, maybe it's, it's probably too small. And and now I, this is all caveated by the fact that I am not a hunter and I have never skinned an animal before. Uh, so all of you uh, hunters who are listening, who are laughing right now, just hear me out for a second. The reason I think this might be a good skinner, maybe for squirrels or something small, but uh, is the fact that you've got this nice place to put your thumb and then look at that perfectly rounded belly there. Uh, that So you got that straight headed down and then the belly coming up towards your finger. And then your finger could be there to make sure you're not puncturing guts and stuff. I don't know. Is that is that am I totally off base? I might be because this is on bearings, too. And I I'm pretty sure you, you might not want to use this uh, unless you're willing to take it apart and and undo it. But uh, I mean, you know, ungunkify the. Uh, those bearings in there. But that's the first thing I thought of when I pulled this out and put my finger forward like this. I'm like, God, would this be a good skinning knife? I don't know. Let me know. Anyone who is a hunter, I know we have a number of them who watch this uh, show, put in the comments, am I totally off base or uh, am I sort of on base? I think I might be sort of on base. But uh, who doesn't think they're always sort of on base? Uh, so let us know. Uh, Comment below, please, or send me an email or call the listener line, 724-466-4487. And let me know. Let me hear the beautiful golden tones of your voice saying, Bob, you're a nut job. You'd never use that for hunting. Uh, that being said, uh, listener line, 724-466-4487. I did use this knife yesterday. Uh, I was out. I had. Uh, I was doing some work and, and weeding. And no, I didn't use this to cut the weeds. I was just pulling them out. But I noticed uh, in this bed of stones we have out front, uh, some of the black plastic I used to line the ground 
uh, years ago so that weeds wouldn't come through, which is now starting to fail, obviously, uh, was peeking out. So I used this to to cut off uh, the, the exposed portion of that plastic. Obviously, it did a beautiful job being very um, sharp and, and everything. But then I started to worry about the, the sand, grit, and uh, dust getting in those bearings. And I got very uh, protective and I, I stopped using it and I blew it out and uh, continued on with my weeding, which is a job I hate. Who likes to weed? Let me know on the listener line, 724-466-4487. We might play your insane message right here on the air. Insane because no one likes weeding. Okay, next up is a knife I got uh, just this week through trade with uh, our good friend Dave, this old sword blade reviews. You you must check out Dave's channel. He's got uh, awesome an awesome collection and a great background. Um, he's been collecting knives for years, but also he's been training in Kali. He is a high-performing uh, Kali martial artist, and he's trained with some of the best so I always like his recommendations. I always like his, 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 you know, the kind of knives he has in his collection are the kind of knives I like. So I, I trust him when he says a knife is good. Anyway, I had put up uh, my Blackjack Model 1.7 up for, uh, for sale. And um, he got in touch with me, said, hey, do you want to trade? And I thought, hmm, this is a good opportunity to get a new knife with very little effort. So he asked me to peruse his, uh, he was willing to pay money, but he, but he said, just in case, peruse my uh, YouTube channel and see if there are any knives there that you would like. And of course, there were many. And of course, I came back <laughs> with the, being a hard hitting negotiator, I came back with some knives that were, um, you know, obviously I knew he wasn't going to give up, but I figured, uh, why not try? And, um, and then I saw this. You're wondering, what is that crazy, strange-looking knife? Well, you saw this. It was released last year. This is a Dirk Pinkerton design called the Inversion. It's a Kaiser knife, and it is the only Pical-style fancy frame lock titanium flipper, or not flipper, but a folder that I think I know of. And um, when I was down at Blade Show... Uh, buying this beautiful knife from Dirk Pinkerton, the uh, this Pical style uh, fixed blade knife, I had a chance to pick up, he had on the table, his inversion, the Kaiser knife. So I had a chance to pick it up and play with it. And I thought, wow, this is awesome. Uh, I've always liked Kaiser. I think they're a good quality knife. They use great materials. Fit and finish is, is on point. And um, I've always liked their custom collaborations. So... I was uh, looking forward to getting this, you know, somehow, um, but I don't know, just in terms of buying lately, my priorities have been a little bit different. I've been into getting uh, handmade custom fixed blades from up and comers. And uh, this presented itself in trade with Dave. And so I snapped it up. So he now has my uh, Bark River Knives made Blackjack Model 1.7 based on the uh, on the classic Randall model number one. And I now have this gorgeous Pical style uh, inversion from Kaiser and Dirk Pinkerton. Now you're looking at that and you're saying, yeah, but Bob, the edge is facing the wrong way. Well, that's what a Pical style knife is. It's the kind of knife that you grip in reverse grip like this. And uh, the tip is facing down and the edge is facing in. Now it allows for... Um, gross motor movement. I'm going to go to this camera. It's going to be easier for me to show. Um, but say you actually need to use a, a knife in a self-defense scenario. You're going to most likely be all jacked up with adrenaline and you're going to be going, you're going to be in caveman mode, right? And so this optimizes caveman mode uh, because the downward thrust and you're, and you're with the arc of your arm, your shoulder, your, your elbow, your wrist, you're going to be naturally pulling back and having the edge on that side um, maximizes the effect of using a knife in that sort of situation. Also, if you're, you know, a hot shot like Dave or, or me sometimes uh, you can, you can use that edge uh, in trapping to great effect. So someone comes in like this, you're blocking their arm, you hook it down 
and uh, you trap it in there with that with that edge. It's a it's hideously nasty. And then when you disengage, you get a you get a huge cut. So the inversion is a is a definitely a specialized kind of knife. It's not your average EDC uh, blade, but it could be used as such. I mean, you can use this to open packages if you have it on you and stuff. But but it really is uh, built for this this style grip, as you can tell from the from the choils and everything. It looks like the blade is backwards on the handle uh, if you're looking at it in a traditional sense. Uh, it is a frame lock. It's got this beautiful terracing, a very effective. I'm gonna I'm gonna I gotta stop using beautiful all the time. It's got very effective terracing here on the on the handle scale, and um, a neat little feature that comes with it is that brass thumb stud there. And if you look at it, uh, if you look at it closely, you'll see there is a um, indentation at the forward portion of that brass um, thumb stud, and it allows you to hook on your pocket and auto deploy it when you pull it out, which is, in my opinion, quite a necessary feature on this style knife. You're not pulling this knife out to open boxes. You're not pulling this knife out to to you know, cut your sandwich in half. You're opening this knife because uh, you might need to use it in a in a combative kind of way, and having that uh, you know uh, automatic opener. When, I shouldn't say automatic because that that in that implies springs and a button. Uh, that sort of um, wave opener there will have this thing open and ready to go as soon as it's out of your pocket. So. A cool feature. It ships with that knife. It also uh, comes with a regular uh, steel, I think, or titanium thumb thumb plate that is uh, smaller and less brass. And uh, you know, could be something you want to use if you don't want the chance of opening it up when you pull it out. So I'm very excited about this um, inversion next to my. Um, Emerson Elvia, it, it is my one folding Pical style knife, and I am thrilled to have it. I've been carrying it uh, a bunch the past couple of days. All right. Now, the next two are knives that Dave has given, gifted to the channel. Um, he has very generous, been very generous with this channel and has gifted a number of knives to us that we've used for uh, the giveaway knives, uh, some of them. And uh, a couple, uh, one of them I kind of kept for myself. At least I, I consider it like a foster knife. And someday I'll, when it's ready, I'll, I'll, I'll let it go out into the wild. But for now, it's, uh, it's under my roof. Uh, but these two that, that uh, Dave sent this time uh, for future giveaways are really cool. I mean, these are going to be hard for me to, to part with, I got to say. Uh, the first one is also a Kaiser, and it's the Domin or Domin. Not sure, uh, not sure exactly how it how it's pronounced, uh, but it is the spiritual cousin of the Beg Letter, a very very popular Kaiser EDC knife that has seen a number of iterations from uh, different colored G10s to uh, micarta to brass to to just different handle materials, blade colors, steels, and treatment. And they brought this one out, uh, I believe sort of as a companion piece or, or as a, uh, you know, they were having a lot of success with the beg letter. And then uh, I guess they figured another knife in that same vein would be good as a, as an alternative. And I'm really impressed with this knife. It's on brass washers and uh, I mean, not brass uh, bronze washers. And it flips open so nice with just a flick of the hand. It's a, um, with a flick of the thumb stud. It is a thumb stud knife. It is a liner lock. I'm going to bring it back under the knife cam here. It is a liner lock. As you can see, nice stout liner lock. And uh, <clears throat> it's got G10 handle scales. This one, as you can see, is that nice uh, coyote tan. It's fully flat ground. This is VG10 steel. And uh, just a really nice utilitarian blade. Let's see. It's one, two, three. It's three and a quarter inches long. So it's that sweet spot for EDC for a lot of people. Um, and uh, I'm really happy that we have this giveaway knife. Because I think this is 
going to be one that people are going to be excited to get is to me this is kind of like kaiser's version of what like a like an endura or a delica or something something or the indela i was going to say something in between so the indela uh just in that it's um you know it's not super flashy but man it it's super super utility driven and it's got some panache to it the design has some style to it if you look it's got um the uh the liners sit proud of the g10 handle which i really like uh and it has a good feel to it like that so just a great knife fully flat ground thank you dave uh, I am going to, I'm not going to break it in. I'm not going to use it or anything, but I might pick it up and paw it every once in a while. I do love a knife that uh, you don't have to just flick. You know, I do love a knife that um, you don't, you don't need to use force to overcome the detent too much. You can slow roll it out because sometimes you just need to, like you're in the break room cutting your sandwich, flicking it out can sometimes seem a little aggressive. So I do like an EDC that allows for that. All right. Next up is a knife from a company that I am just, this is my first exposure to, uh, besides, you know, YouTube and Instagram. Um, and that is, and it's a Czech, a knife from the Czech Republic. Yes, you know what it is at this point. It's an acta non verba. And uh, I guess that means deeds, not words, or actions, not words. Um, I'm sure my dad's watching. He knows Latin. He'll tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, so this is a great looking flipper. Uh, this is called the Z300 by Acton on Verba. It's got a beautiful drop point blade with a full swedge coming all the way up to the, to the um, Ricasso there. A great flipper tab. And I know some people might think that's a tall flipper, but I, I don't know. There's something about it. It's very shark-like. It looks like the pectoral fin of a shark. And uh, the handle has a beautiful, mm, there, I said it again. The handle has a very useful shape to it. Uh, it it's, doesn't have any swales or, or grooves for your finger per se. It's just got two angles, angles in the center. And uh, it really gives you great purchase, great grip on this knife. If you see it in hand like this, you can see your fingers wrap around perfectly like that. And to have it um, narrow at the, at the uh, butt of the knife really sinks it into your hand and, and really makes this thing nestle uh, nicely into your hand. Uh, this knife also feels great in reverse grip if, it's, if that's your thing. Um, oftentimes it's not anyone's thing. Uh, having a little bit of uh, stuttering troubles with the knife cam today. That's why I keep bringing it up here. Uh, but you've got a nice place to rest your thumb in reverse grip, and it sort of bolsters up against the uh, the clip there. So uh, just a just a nice nice knife. And uh, this thing is Schleipner steel. Schleipner uh, steel. I, I gotta I gotta be honest with you. I have very little experience, if any, with Schleipner steel. Uh, it's on bronze washers, another bronze washer knife. I am a big fan of washers. Uh, I do like uh, the feel of bearings. You know, I'm not uh, I'm not an alien or anything. I love the feel of bearings, but I love the feel of wa uh, washers too. They make me, they give me a little more confidence, I must say. And uh, and they have that uh, what is called frequently a hydraulic feel where there's just a little bit of resistance that you're pushing against when you close it. And uh, I like that, that feel. Uh, so it's just a personal taste thing. Um, oh, one last thing. The sculpting in the G10 handle is really nice. I got a little schmutz on there. I'll, I'll clean that up when I'm done. Uh, deep carry pocket side. And just a really, uh, really, you can see the little slots there for the deep carry pocket clip. Just a really cool, unique knife. Now, Acta Non Verba out of the Czech Republic has a number of uh, number of knives. I mean, they kind of kind of came on the American scene, uh, all, all guns blazing, and they have a few fixed blades that to me are just. Oof. They have a dagger that I love, and then they have this thing that reminds me a little bit of a dervish. Um, if you know Dervish Knives, he's been on the podcast, uh, John Gonzalez. 
uh, but it's a um, it looks like up front. It's hmm, it looks like an elongated Tom Brown tracker kind of uh, where uh, towards the handle, it's got a a, a portion that's hollowed out. Um, it's got uh, I'm just trying to describe the the edge. It's sort of curved upward and then it transitions halfway down the blade and then curves in the other direction. Uh, more abrupt than something like a Vaquero. Um, well, anyway, check them out. Just check out Acta Non Verba on, on Instagram or um, YouTube or wherever you get your, your knife fix and, uh, and check those things out. Uh, very cool knives. All right, so now uh, on to the automatic knives in my collection. Now, if you're watching and we are experiencing some knife cam stuttering, I'm going to go back and forth between holding them up to the main camera in front of my face, and then I will place them down for the still shot on the uh, on the under the knife cam. Um, we've had some issues with the knife cam recently, and uh, well, we aim. Uh, I was attempted today, but uh, doesn't seem to be working. All right. So first, before we get into the main knives, I just want to show off. Uh, the oldest automatic knives in my collection, and they are European tourist switchblades uh, that I got in the 80s. So this one um, came to me from my brother in 1983 or four, I'm going to say. He went to Germany uh, as a junior in high school, and he was in the beautiful, beautiful town of Cologne, and he got me this switchblade with the Cologne Cathedral on it. It's activated by this paddle switch here that you pull down and then press, and then you can stash it back in place there. So this, uh, this was the first one I got, and the second one was uh, one that my parents got for me, NATO military, it says. When they went to France one year, I said, please get me a stiletto. That's what we used to call these, a stiletto. That's the kind of knife where it, and out the front, that's what we used to call out the fronts, stilettos. So they picked this up. I don't know. You could probably buy this at the airport back in the day, but uh, very cool knives. Now, I remember when uh, when my brother first got me this this one from Cologne, he, uh, he said all he heard for the first couple of nights was this sound, sound of it opening and closing, like over and over, because that's that's all I was doing was, well, at that age, I was playing with my knives. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. So those are the two uh, old knives I just wanted to show off just to just to let you know that 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 these things have been around in my collection for a long time. But the first legitimate modern automatic knife that I got uh, was this ProTech Rockeye, a beautiful knife that I was so excited became available because I was a huge fan and still am of the VSEP knife by Les George. And it was way out of my range in terms of what I was going to pay for a knife. And also, and just in terms of availability, the, uh, the ProTech or the, um, the VSEP by Les George was just an out of reach knife. But then ProTech collaborated with him and produced this, knife and uh, man, I jumped on it. It was affordable and it was uh, automatic, which was very, um, uh, very appealing to me. And then just to be able to have that blade and handle profile uh, really, really was exciting to me. I remember after I got this, I emailed Les George and uh, through his website and just told him, I finally got one of your Rockeye designs. Rockeye is the um, is the custom version. The VSEP was the mid-tech version. And then this, the uh, ProTech they call the Rockeye. So I finally got one of your Rockeye designs in hand uh, and it's a ProTech and I love it. And he's like, yeah, they did a great job with it. If you like the feel of that ProTech, it's pretty much what it's like to, to have uh, a VSEP in hand. Uh, so I was happy. I was happy with that. In uh, recent years, I have gotten my hands on a, on a VSEP and it's one of my favorite favorites. Uh, but so this was the first one in the collection. It's the the uh, ProTech Rockeye D2 Steel, and it's numbered there. What is it? Um, 
limited first run, 209 of 400. So happy to have that. I'll do all my Protex first. The Protex TR2, Tactical Response 2, is, uh, is a knife that I have always loved in terms of its profile. Now, this knife reminds me a bit of the Topps Lil Bro. It looks like a folding version of the Lil Bro. That's L-I-L Bro. Uh, and this one I bought on the secondary market from a guy in Texas, a farmer in Texas. And he had used this for a couple of seasons in the harvest and, uh, and other stuff. And it came with some wear. It came with a lot of grit in the pivot. Took a little bit of doing to get the grit out of the pivot. But to me, it just added to the uh, to the spirit of the knife. It seemed like um, I liked the feel of having a knife that I knew did a lot of work before it came to me, knowing that uh, I wasn't going to be able to carry it and that it wasn't going to do a lot of work for me. But actually, uh, incidentally, as you can see from the light blue paint drips on it um, that are actually very hard to remove. I, I wanted to leave them on there, but uh, now I want to take them off and they're actually hard to take off. Uh, but this was a knife we used in painting and working on my daughter's room. Um, this became a favorite of hers. And so she ended up holding it and using it, you know, to cut tape and all that kind of stuff. Uh, hence the drips. Um, which is good because if I had gotten the drips on there, I would have been, uh, I would have been upset with myself, but having, giving this to her, hearing her use it click and knowing she was doing a good job with it and then getting it back like this was cool. So I'm going to, I guess I'll leave it like that. Uh, this is uh 154 CM kind of as usual for ProTech and just an excellent, excellent knife. I love the knurling on the front portion and the back portion of the handle. Great knife, the Protec TR2. Now the next knife I got because, well, I always liked the way it looked, but I saw a video with a with a vet and I can't remember if he was, what, what branch of service he was with, but he lost a Protec in the sand and then found it a while later. And without blowing it, blowing it out or doing anything like that, he clicked it open and it worked perfectly. And so I had to get one. And it was the TR3. I have the SWAT edition. This is 154 cm also. And uh, just an excellent shape. The ergonomics on this are awesome. That blade is very thin and keen. And uh, I like the shape of it. It is a drop point And... Uh, not a boring drop point, if you ask me. I love the fluting in the handle that adds adds grip. The one that I wanted to get originally is the one that has the fish scales milled into them. Have you seen those? Uh, they are really cool. Actually, they're, they just did a run of them, and you can find them on either Knife Center or Blade HQ. I can't remember which, uh, but it is that's what I really wanted. Those weren't available at the time. So I got this, but since getting this one, I've really taken to that handle. It's very grippy with those, uh, with those fullers or, or grooves or flutes or whatever you want to call them in there. I like how the blade edge terminates, uh, in a large, um, sharpening notch there. And, uh, yeah, this is one that I've used quite a bit. And unfortunately, their hard coating, their hard anodized coating on their aluminum is so <laughs> is so good. It doesn't wear easily, at least for the amount that I use my knives. And I love the look of worn anodization on aluminum. So the TR3, an excellent knife from ProTech. All right, last in the ProTech line is one that I got from the Knife Whisperer, Joe. Uh, here's to you, Joe. Uh, this is a Strider, ProTech Strider SNG with the GL Hansen & Sons G Carta on it. I believe this is, I keep forgetting, I think it's called Patriot, Patriotic My Carta or something like that. Um, you can see the red, white, and blue. That G Carta is awesome. The knife itself is great too. It's a, um, I have the SMF, which is the large version uh, by Strider. And then I don't have an SNG, never have. 
and was curious about the feel, the size and all that. And this is, it's a great design. The SNG is a great design, but ProTech really knocked it out of the park with their, with their interpretation of it. There you see that notch. Here, let me hold it up there. There you go. There you see that sharpening notch I was talking about before when I was talking about the who knives, the way it's angled, I, I really like. Uh, but like a strider, the lock side or the clip side here is integral. So it 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 integrates the backspacer with this side's scale. Except in this case, it's aluminum on a uh, Strider SM SNG. This is a piece of titanium. You've got the frame lock cut out of it there. And then when you turn it on its side, oh, no, 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 I take it back. They do it from the show side. So you have the show side in uh, G10. And when you flip it this way, it integrates the backspacer into that G10. So the G10 is all, uh, the backspacer and the show side are all one piece. And then the titanium lock side is is attached there. So they kind of did the same thing, but in reverse and uh, with the aluminum there. And this thing is awesome. Like all Protex, it's got a great kick to it. It snaps open. And I'm not sure if you can see this, but that button is mother of pearl for a touch of class. Uh, you've got a um, medium tumbled finish here on the, on the, on the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the bevel. And then you have a nice satin machine, satin finish on the flats there. 154 CM, just a great knife. Again, thanks, Joe. Joe gave me a nice deal on this knife. And uh, yeah, I'm a, it's, I'm a big fan of this thing. I wore it, carried it, wore it, whatever, carried it on the 4th of July. It seemed only appropriate to carry an American knife designed by an American classic with American G Carta with an American sort of pattern. Red, white, and blue, baby. All right, so the last four are coming up, but the last, the, the next three are all of the same brand. So here is, start with this one, the Microtech Ultratech. Oh man, I love this knife. So the reason I got this one initially was because it was the one double ground dagger in a folding format. And folding, I just mean, obviously this doesn't fold it. It's an out the front, but the blade hides in the handle like a folder. So it's something you can carry, even though I can't carry it legally in my state, you know what I'm getting at here. And, uh, you know, I have a number of fixed blade daggers, but I wanted something that could fold that was double edged. And these were the only thing uh, within reach for me. And uh, so I found this on the secondary market and never looked back. So that's a 3.4 inch double edge blade. You have a serrated uh, top side of the blade and then a fine edge uh, on, the, on the regular cutting edge. Thing about this knife is it, it sort of defies logic because if you put your finger on the medial ridge here going down the center of the blade and then you pinch your fingers down to the edge of the blade it seems like it should be not very sharp it seems like because it's not very thin behind the edge it shouldn't be that sharp but i have never met a, a, a microtech that wasn't just ridiculously screaming deceptively sharp and this is no exception this knife is so incredibly sharp on that primary edge it's crazy and and i guess what i'm saying is is it's not very thin behind the edge the geometry seems like it shouldn't be that sharp but man it is great serrated pattern on top also very sharp it's got two small scoops and a large scoop two small scoops and a large scoop kind of a, a standard interesting thing about the ultra tech to me is that if you hold it upside down uh, with the switch, the actuating switch on the bottom and your thumb on the top, it, it's almost more ergonomically sound to me. It's as if this sliding uh, actuator here acts as the finger guard and your thumb buries nicely in this 
excellent as usual jimping. I say excellent, excellent as usual. I think that uh, Microtech does some of the best jimping and uh, the way they mold it into the uh, aluminum is just so grippy and effective. So um, yeah, this is my Ultratech. Love this thing. And I really dig that uh, Raptor Talon logo. This has the proprietary hardware on it, uh, the, the peaked sort of three-sided diamond thing. Uh, but man, yeah, I wouldn't try and take this apart. Uh, I've looked at other people do it and it's not for me. I'm not going to try and take that apart. Next one is another out the front. The only other out the front uh, I have, oh, well, I guess I have three of them, including the old NATO military from France. But this is a Troodon. And this Troodon, I thought I was buying a combat Troodon, which is an inch larger. Uh, I just jumped on it. I thought it was a good deal. And I bought it and I didn't read the fine print and uh, got it. And I was like, oh, that's way smaller than I was expecting. But it has become a favorite of mine. This is a great um, in the waistband carry, um, you know, for around the house. But great in the waistband carry knife. It's the same setup as the Ultratech in that it's got the serrations on the top and the fine edge on the bottom. And the same thing. It is extremely extremely sharp though it seems pretty op seems like it comes down to the edge in a pretty oblique angle the one hiccup about this knife to me or maybe there are two and uh they're both on the handle here the that excellent jimping i was telling you about is placed right underneath a very tight clip so that that can be painful bring uh, not literally painful but uh, taking it in and out of whatever you're clipping it to can be difficult. I haven't bent the clip yet. I probably will at some point. Uh, also, that glass breaker came extremely pointy. And uh, last summer, I did a video experimenting with my different glass breakers. And this one worked for sure, uh, but it dulled down. It used to be very pointy. And now it's not. I just don't like the very pointy thing at all, uh, whether it's dulled down or not uh, on the on the butt of a knife i think it's that's where i like to put my thumb uh if i'm carrying you know holding it in reverse grip not that i do often but um so i i just kind of don't like it there um i have seen I'm trying to think of what it was but i have seen glass breakers placed right up front next to the blade and here as you can see the opening for the blade is offset in cross section. So you would have space there to put a small, more ultra tech style round ball, tungsten ball there for a glass breaker. I, uh, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a designer with Microtech and I don't pretend to know more than they do about their own knife, but I think it'd be interesting to see what they could do without that there. I guess the new Hera, their new out the out the front doesn't have that there, so maybe they addressed that issue with with that design. Um, I think this is removable that uh, that glass breaker, as you can see with those holes that go all the way through. I think you can put a small Allen wrench through there and just kind of unscrew it, but that might just remove the uh, the pocket clip too. So unsure. I haven't taken done any kind of work to these. I'm I'm very, very nervous about working on an automatic knife because I would hate to just have the parts of an automatic knife. If you look at this, it also has that proprietary hardware. This is those the three whole screws. And uh, yeah, so even if you want to take it apart, it's going to be difficult because you're going to need to have that hardware, that uh, piece, that tool to open it up with. Okay, penultimate here is the Microtech LCC. LCC stands for Lightfoot Compact Combat. Greg Lightfoot designed this in 19, 2001, I think it was. Let me see, Does it, is it? Sometimes they date them. This was 2000, uh, designed in 2000, and this one is from August of 2002. So this thing is just about 19 years old. Uh, so as you can see, it's got that really interesting 
clip point blade with the with the uh, it's like a clip point drop point blade. Awesome Microtech serrations, titanium bolster, linen brown linen micarta handles, and thumb studs. Thumb studs, you say? But that's an automatic knife. Why would it have thumb studs? Well, this, friends, is not an automatic knife, and it's not a regular knife. This is a dual action knife. So if you look at this, see the bolster? On the presentation side, all you have to do is move the bolster, slide it this way. Let me see if I can do it with, okay, I'll just do it this way. By pressing your thumb on the bolster right here, see how it opens up a, a gap there? Well, that releases the blade in an automatic fashion. So you can have this knife and carry it around and be like, oh, no, officer, this is just a regular thumb stud knife. And if you're in a place where the size isn't an issue, um, they might never notice that it is actually an automatic. Pretty cool design. Uh, it's like a sort of like a whiskers. I think that's a uh, that's a micro or that's a um, Protec that has this kind of bolster release. And uh, Chuck Gadritis does some of those kind of uh, scale release models where you just slide the scale in a certain direction against uh, against the liner, and then the blade pops out. This is kind of one of those uh, prized possession type knives. I rarely carry it, rarely if if ever. I mean, I've carried it a couple of times, but I never reach for this one because it's kind of, at this point, uh, a, a much sought after kind of heirloom knife. Um, I think Microtech collectors really uh, gravitate towards these. These were also one of the first models to use carbon fiber in the handle. One of the first production knife models to use carbon fiber. This one happens to be my preferred brown linen micarta. But um, yeah, this knife has a lot of history and is much coveted for a number of reasons. One being that dual action, the other being uh, just the fact that it's rare and hard to find. So there it is. The one last automatic knife in my collection is perhaps the most charming, and that is the Kershaw Launch 9. This tiny, tiny little knife that's like a two-inch blade. This thing is awesome. It kicks with like a mule, I got to say, and is an awesome little fifth pocket carry knife. I mean, this thing defines fifth pocket carry knife. It fits in there perfectly. You do have a clip. Uh, if you want to make sure it's it's in there tight, uh, but just works great. It's very, very sharp. It's got excellent action. It's got a nice, uh, the blade has nice geometry, nice uh, thinness behind the edge, uh, but for its size, pretty robust. Um, and then this sculpted aluminum handle feels great in hand. And even though it's like a three three finger grip, it stays very secure in hand. It's almost like, um, the three finger grip is as strong as it's going to be. And then that pinky kind of butts, butts up against the back. So it's not going to slide into your hand. And, uh, like, like the, uh, model 1929, I was showing you before, uh, this is like a little scalpel blade too. Made in America. All of these are made in America, as a matter of fact. So there it is. This is my collection of automatic knives. Um, I would love to see it grow. I would love to see the uh, Microtech Stitch designed by Borka Blades. I would love that in my collection, but I have to maintain it, keep it relatively small because, like I said, it doesn't make too much sense to have and carry uh, to have them because I can't carry them. They're they're only kind of collectors' pieces for me, and uh, there's only so much I can just collect without the possibility of carrying because then then it kind of starts to seem a little useless and a little weird, frankly. It's like the uh, crystal penguins on the shelf all around the room. It's like, what do you do with those crystal penguins? I just don't know. I just don't know.
All right. So in closing, be sure to check us out on Patreon. You go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon uh, to help support the show, help support what we do here on the uh, Wednesday supplemental, also the weekend interview shows, and then, of course, Thursday Night Knives, our live stream. Also, your support on Patreon helps uh, keep the infrastructure going and moving, and it also helps get some new knives into the into the station into the channel. I keep saying station into the channel uh, for review. Uh, coming up this Sunday is episode two thirty six. We have Israel Bacchus of Arcane Designs. Uh, this is the second time he's been on the show. He's a great guy. We have an awesome conversation. Uh, I met him in person at Blade uh, after having interviewed him on the show here, and uh, great guy. He just released uh, his crawler, and that thing sold out. The pre-order of that sold out in under two hours. Um, so he's doing a bang-up job and just, uh, you know, he started his career in knives and hit the ground running. Great guy to talk talk with and listen to. Check out thenifejunkie.com. Also check out our Facebook group. That's thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook for lively conversation with other knife junkies. And then, of course, as I mentioned before, there's Instagram if you want to see what resides in the collection. All right, for my very patient friend, Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I am Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco saying, until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.